Hello beautiful souls, Daniel Alcyon here, ecstaticexistence.com. And I'm preparing to lead an acro yoga workshop in just a couple hours from now. And as I set up and start thinking about what the flow of this individual workshop is going to be, I couldn't help but start thinking about my personal journey with acro yoga or acrobatic yoga. It's kind of a cool story and I realized that it made a huge impact on my life. So several years ago, I think it's like five or six years now, I was not, not very spiritual. My spirituality was asleep. I was dating somebody that didn't uh, have a spiritual connection and thought it was all silly. And so I didn't um, embrace that part of myself. It had been dormant pretty much since I was a teenager. I was an exceptionally spiritual person when I was a teenager. And then through my first marriage, that part went to sleep, withered on the vine and died. And then, um, so anyway, I was in this, this relationship. It wasn't serving my spiritual needs. And mm, that's about wraps up where I was. I ended up going to a festival, a conscious festival. And there I was walking around, checking out all the sites, right? There's so much to check out. And then beautiful sunny day on this grassy hill, I look across the way and I see these two people doing something I'd never seen before in my whole life. And there was a man lying on his back in this green grass with his arms extended up in the air. And there was a woman, this beautiful free spirited woman standing on his hands, just standing up. And her eyes were closed and her heart was open up to the sky. And then she slowly lifts her hands up in the air and then does a full fold all the way down onto his feet. It was like this amazing thing. And I, it just stopped me in my tracks, stopped me in my tracks. And I sat down on this hill across the way and I watched this couple for probably half an hour, just playing and moving and practicing and doing their work. And I was so stunned. Something in me, deep inside of me, was enlivened. It was like a spark inside of me that I didn't even know what it was, you know? I had no idea what they were doing. I'd never seen anything like it before. And when they were finished, I went over and introduced myself and talked to them. And I said, what are you doing? What is this? And they said, oh, well, it's acro yoga or acrobatic yoga. And my mind was blown right away because all of a sudden, I'm like, yoga? I've never thought about yoga in my whole life. I'd never thought that that was something that I would be into, you know? Even in my younger days when I was deep into my spirituality, I was more of a ninja. I was more of like the martial arts, like warrior. And so yoga was like a foreign concept, okay? I'm like, wow, acro yoga, acrobatic yoga. And so I take this with me. I'm like, wow, I really have all these ideas buzzing through my head now. I go home back after this conscious festival and I started doing a couple uh, yoga classes just with DVD. You know, I would like get the DVDs and like start checking out some yoga in the privacy of my own home. I was like, okay, yeah, this is cool. I, I see the draw now. Now I'm starting to see this, this attraction. And then I realized that that wasn't enough. I needed more connection. I needed more like one-on-one. -on -one. I needed more depth than the DVD could give me. And so I looked at my local yoga studio and I went really close to where I was living, got like a multi-class pass and I, I dove in. I started taking every single yoga class I could get my ass to. And it was great. It was so great. Through it, I started finding this whole new level of myself that I had lost and had gone to sleep. Um, I had always been a very busy mind and busy body, like so many ideas to do, so much movement and the concept of meditation was beautiful to me. I loved the concept and the idea of meditation. I loved even reading about meditation. But now, in practice, actually meditating, just sit there and do nothing, freaked me out. Totally terrifying. So through yoga now, through taking every yoga class I could take, I ended up discovering that point where through the fixation of the mind and the body in a specific posture and a focusing of energetic flow, all of a sudden now I was able to attain beautiful, deep stillness and meditation. 
So this became a real passion for me. I took yoga for a full year. Full year, took every class I could take. A full year later, I went back to the same conscious festival that I was at when I was first introduced to acrobatic yoga. And wouldn't you know, I see another couple, a totally different couple doing acro this time. And now I have enough courage after my own yoga practice for a full year, I had enough courage to go up and talk to them and ask if I could try it too. And they were super receptive. They're like, yeah, absolutely. And so right away I start basing and I start flying and I was terrible and it was fun and it was invigorating and exciting and my heart was racing. And all of a sudden I just like knew, I just knew that I found my next thing. I knew it. And so I went home from that festival and I looked around and I found a place in Seattle that was offering classes. And it's, you know, almost an hour away from Tacoma where I was living. And I just made the commitment and every single week, every week I would go up, drive to Seattle and take this class and just started learning started acquiring as much as I could. And I started finding that my skill set was blossoming. It was getting like so much better rapidly because there was just this, this soul connection with what was happening. And I couldn't even quite put words to why I was so enamored with this practice and what was so exciting to me, right? It was hard to describe. Well, there was no acro yoga in my local community. Oh. Got a question? What about the twin flame connection? This deep feeling? We're getting there. We are getting there, Martin. I'll tell you all about that. That's part of this story, as a matter of fact. Isn't that beautiful? So there was no acro yoga at all in my area. I had to drive almost an hour away to take classes. Well, in time, I said, you know what? I want a community around me that I can practice with more regularly whenever I want, not just the once a week and for longer periods of time. So I took it upon myself and I started a meetup group. I started like an acro yoga meetup group, a Tacoma acro yoga meetup group. And I started hosting free meetups in the parks, in the local parks, right? So anybody could come and I would teach them whatever basics that I knew, anything that I was able to offer and provide. And we would all play and we would have fun. And it ended up being these pretty large gatherings in some local parks. Um, We'd have some great turnouts. Whole families would come out, you know, bringing instruments and drums and acoustic guitars and potluck food. And it was amazing. It was amazing that this community really started to grow. So now I decided, okay, this is going, we need to step further. So I need a little more depth, a little more connection, right? Than just these little meetups in the park. I ended up becoming Facebook friends with the very first couple I saw doing acro yoga two years prior, two and a half years prior. And I reached out to them on Facebook and I was like, hey, oh, by the way, their names are, this was Veronica Fernmoss and Glenn Easley. And I'm still friends with them today. They are absolutely beautiful people and exceptionally inspiring, both in their own way. So I reached out to Veronica and Glenn and I was like, hey, uh, what do you guys think? I have a friend that owns a local yoga studio, a healing arts space. And I know you two that teach acro yoga. What do you think about connecting the two and coming to Tacoma, teaching some classes here? It ended up working. It happened. We all connected. Uh, we started having weekly acro yoga classes right in my own city, right in my own backyard. So that was great. I took, I got this thing that at first started on the very periphery of my consciousness. Like I didn't know it existed. And then I got turned on to it. I was like, whoa, there's this great thing. So I began drawing it closer and closer and closer and closer as I cultivated my own practice and my own strength, right? My own love for it. So now the next thing I know, I went from having no awareness of it to having to drive an hour each way to it all the way back to where, like now it's in my own backyard. Now it was like right up the street from where I lived. Awesome, so perfect, right? Well, this carried on for a little while. And in this class, now I'm getting to your, your question there, Martin. In this class, I ended up meeting a beautiful, strong, passionate, silly, amazing woman. Her name is Rachel. And today she is my soulmate and my wife and my partner in every single way. So 
we met in the acro yoga class and we were friends at first for you know oh a couple months we were just attending the, the class together and we were classmates and maybe we would go out afterwards like in a group of friends but it wasn't like a romantic thing and uh part of that was because to really establish a good amount of safety in acro yoga we're in physical contact with other people it's sometimes in like a rather intimate way so there needs to be a safety net there needs to be a certain level of safety where you can be an intimate physicality with another person without it being sexual without it being pervy or like overly flirty you know because if if i was like flirting with every single woman or guy or partner that i did a pose with that would be creepy and it wouldn't be a safe place okay so one of the things that uh one of the things that I realized now in hindsight that I really needed out of acrobatic yoga was that safe, healthy touch and physical connection. That was something I was really lacking. I didn't have that, you know? It was like the only physical contact I would have would maybe be of the sexual nature, right? There wasn't any safe, nurturing, unsexualized contact or intimacy. So anyway, that's, that's the story of why Rachel and I were just friends and, and acrobatic partners in this class for a couple months. But then, then finally, after that establishment was there, that foundation was laid, I got a little bold and made a little, made a little move, made, made a little advancement. And it ended up just working out beautifully. Our passions were so completely aligned, like the twin flame spark was unreal, right? Um, each of us kind of reflecting back where we were and the drive and the passion that we had for spirituality. You know, it was so great because the relationship I had been in prior, um, there was no spirituality and it was really dead and asleep when I ended up discovering my path with yoga. But so now with Rachel, it was like, on our very first official date, we go out together and we're talking about aliens and UFOs and uh, inner child work and the, the physical correlation to emotional ailments. Um, amazing, amazing stuff. So we just went really deep with that. Okay, let's get back to this path with acro yoga, right? So now here we are, we're, we're an item now, we're an actual couple and the people, Glenn and Veronica, that were teaching our local acro yoga class, they uh, had to move on. It wasn't quite practical, and so it had served its time for them. So Rachel and I stepped up to lead the class. So now next thing you know, here we are. We are teaching the class that I manifested and cultivated in from literal non-existence, from a pre-idea. I didn't even know it was a thing brought this through the realm of idea where I was just able to think about this. Wow, this acro yoga thing's cool. Now all of a sudden there's a plan and momentum where I'm starting to build and cultivate community around me. And now it's really put into action where next thing you know, we're teaching the class on a weekly basis. It was really cool. Well, that was several years ago now. Now there's a thriving acro yoga community here in the South Salish Sea, Puget Sound area. And I absolutely love it. It's great. People can go multiple nights a week to different places and meet with different groups. And um, it's just really been such a healing journey for me, such an empowering journey for me. Through acrobatic yoga, I was able to find my reconnection with strength, with balance, and more importantly, with that, like, that connection, that intimacy with, with others. Because an individual yoga practice is great. It's amazing. You know, I, I love instructing and teaching yoga, but that's a one-on-one -on -one thing. That's like an individual, your personal journey on the mat. And when you get with a partner in this acrobatic, this dynamic couples partnering, you're lifting, you're balancing each other. You're, it, all of a sudden it takes everything you gain from yoga and it's gonna layer on more elements. It's gonna layer on levels of trust levels of surrender, accountability, security, um, oh, heart opening. You have to be open, you have to communicate. It's like nonverbal communication. You have to be able to communicate just by the subtlest touch. You have to be able to read your partner's direction, their movement, their intention. It's a gorgeous, amazing practice. And uh, 
I've heard some people say that they don't know if they can. They don't know if they're capable of doing acro yoga. Well, here's the thing. If you're physically fit enough to take a yoga class, any kind of yoga, if you like have been to a yoga class or, or I would even say if you have done like any form of exercise class, if you go to the gym ever, if you ride a bicycle, if you pretty much are in decent enough health to move your body without any significant pain, you can do acro yoga. There are poses everywhere from very dynamic, high energy poses, all the way to restorative, relaxing, rejuvenating poses. So it's a good practice for you. Good practice for everyone. Families love it. I love doing acro with my kids. They love doing acro with me. Ah, that was my personal journey with acro yoga. And I'm going to continue it today, just in a couple hours, introduce a whole bunch more people to this lovely practice. And I know that it will be very healing for them and a big part of their journey as well. So reach out to me if you have more questions about this subject. I am available to teach workshops and private lessons in acro yoga and meditation, mudras, the metaphysical, etc. I love connecting with you all. Keep those comments coming. If you want to know anything further, have questions for me, let me know. And make sure to check out ecstaticexistence.com and the Ecstatic Existence podcast. I love you all so much. Talk to you soon. Namaste.